Hello everyone and welcome to a long overdue book haul. Probably not overdue for you, but overdue for me because I've had these books laying around and I've been waiting to film a book haul because once I do that, then I can read you my bookshelves and stuff and I'm very excited for that. But yes, book haul time. Hello. But before we get into the books, we need to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a super popular and fast growing online book service for readers that I absolutely love. I've been getting their boxes for quite a few months now and I'm just so impressed with their selections every month. So basically, if you don't know how it works, every month their team vets hundreds of books and gives readers their choice from a curated selection of book titles. And these are all new and early release book titles. And that means that you as a reader can spend less time researching, trying to find good books and more time reading. And I also love that Book of the Month are passionate about promoting new and emerging authors. I've definitely discovered some amazing authors through Book of the Month. It's also completely risk free. You can and skip any month at any time and you won't be charged and they also have the best price for new release hardcover fiction you can get your first book for just 9.99 using my code with chloe and going to bookofthemonth.com now to talk about their february picks so the first book is the golden couple by greer hendrix and sarah pekkanen and this is a mystery thriller peach blossom spring by melissa Fu, which is historical fiction a river enchanted by rebecca ross which is fantasy romance and the final two picks are the ones that i would have a really tough time choosing between so we have vladimir by julia may jones <laughs> It sounds incredible. It's basically literary fiction. It basically follows a beloved English professor and she has a very charismatic husband who is also a professor at the same liberal arts college. And he is under investigation for his inappropriate relationships with his former students. And basically this explores morality. It's supposed to be quite dark and funny and cynical and just like a fun, entertaining read. So yeah, it sounds super unique and I cannot wait. But like I said, I would have a tough time choosing between that and also Don't Cry For Me by Daniel Black, which is historical fiction and it basically is about this dad accepting his gay son. And I believe it's told through letters. So it's his dad writing letters to his son and apologizing for not accepting him. And he's writing these letters on his deathbed. So he has a lot of regret, obviously, because he wasn't a good father. It explores generational trauma, hope, healing and yeah it just sounds amazing so very stunning february picks if you ask me so once again you can get your first book for just 9.99 by going to bookofthemonth.com and using my code with chloe so thank you so much to the book of the month for sponsoring this video okay so let's get into it so first i think i'm gonna start with poetry because i've obviously been loving poetry a lot and i'm very excited that my collection is currently growing so first i have homebody by rupee core which i have already read actually i know that rupee core kind of gets made fun of online like obviously she's very popular like her poetry is very popular but i also see like people making fun of her poems and stuff so i completely understand like lots of authors maybe rupee core is not gonna be for you but i personally love rupee core's simplistic yet powerful poems and and this collection is basically centered on the mind and the body. When I read this, I was definitely dealing with that feeling of feeling disconnected from your own body. And I really loved this because it definitely helps during that time. And also it's just such a beautiful collection. The thing that I found with Rupee Core is some poems and just like, I felt nothing. And then the next poem I'll be like, wow. I gave this four stars, I think, but I actually regret getting this copy. It's definitely cute, but there's this really stunning like green one and it's like cloth bound. Wow, it's beautiful, but I have this one, but I still love it and it has my annotations in it, so. But I might as well also talk about The Sun and Her Flowers because I haven't read this yet. And like I said, obviously love Rupi Kaur's writing. So I'm excited to read this. Think of those flowers you plant in the garden each year. They will teach you that people too must wilt, fall, root, rise in order to bloom. Then I got the Penguin Book of Romantic Poetry. So basically this is just a collection of lots of different poets, lots of different poems. So we've got William Blake, we've got Lord Byron, we've got Charles Lamb, and Taylor. We've got, where are the women? Where are the women? <laughs> Mary Bryan, Felicia Hemmons. Yeah, anyway, so very excited to have this. It's also just such a beautiful copy. Like, I love this cover. And when I'm redoing my bookshelves, I'm thinking to a poetry shelf. And we'll probably have this on display because it's beautiful. And you know, I'm a romantic. So I needed to get the Penguin Book of Romantic Poetry. Then I got To Star the Dark by Doran Negrifa. And this is an Irish poet. And I haven't read this yet, but I actually did read one of Doran Negrifa's other poems. Well, collection of poetry. It was okay. It didn't really, like, speak to my soul. But I'm hoping that this one will be stunning. And what really drew me to this was actually firstly the cover stunning but also it says do our passions control us or them i'm intrigued then i finally got some poetry by lang lee so i got september love beautiful cover and on the back it says i used to think love had no limits but i draw the line at myself that's definitely what sold me and i've heard so many good things about lang lee's poetry so I'm very excited to give it a try and then i also got lullabies by lang lee firstly this cover is a joke at how beautiful it is like 
well tying me with the one I wanted most to stay but time could not keep me at bay the more it goes the more it's gone the more it takes away so excited then I got the Fairy Queen by Edmund Spencer I saw this in the bookstore I was like excuse me <laughs> Where's my credit? Obviously a joke, but my gamer tag is Fairy Queen. Yeah, when I saw it, I was like, oh, I need that. And then on the back it says, the Fairy Queen has proved one of the most influential poems in the English language. I've never heard of it, so I was like, I need it. Look how thick it is. It's huge. <laughs> Once again, this might be competing for its place out on my poetry bookshelf, but we will see. But yeah, stunning additions. Then I got Crush by Richard Sykin, and this was a gift from Caitlin Bunny. This is one of her favorite collections of poems, and I believe it's about like love, obsession, panic. So yeah, very excited. Then I bought Ariel by Sylvia Plath. One, because Caitlin told me to. Two, because it says, I rise with my red hair, I eat men like air. And then I got Ocean Vong's Night Sky with Exit Runes, which I know I will love. I have only read one poem by Ocean Vong, and it was in the collection Queer Pots of Colour, and that was my favourite poem out of the collection, and wow, he just has a way with words. I follow him on Instagram, so whenever he posts something, I'm like, I can't breathe. So I'm very excited to get to his full collections. I just know I'm gonna love them. And this collection examines how closely the body's appetites for destruction and love are entwined. That sounds incredible. Then I got Film For Her by Orion Carlotto. And this isn't actually just poems. It's actually really cool. This is a collection of like essays, poems, photography. And it's basically about Orion's time living in Paris, I believe. And I'm so excited for this. It just seems so cool. And I actually saw this in the bookstore and it caught my eye and I was like, oh, that looks pretty cool. And then I read on the back, it says, Orion Colotto is a writer, poet, creator, and best-selling author. And I looked her up, realized she makes YouTube videos. And since then, I have been consuming a lot of her YouTube videos because she's amazing. And I'm in love with her. So yeah, I'm sure I'm gonna love this. And it's also just really well made as well. Like nice, like coffee table book vibes. So yeah very happy to have this. Then I want to quickly talk about some non-fiction. So I have two books that I've actually already read. Like I've read both of these, but I listened to them on audio and I love them so much. I needed the physical copy so I could reread them physically and annotate them, etc. So I've got attached. Are you anxious, avoidant or secure? How the science of adult attachment can help you find and keep love. I will talk about this more in my best books of the year. Spoiler alert, this is definitely one of my favorites of the year of last year. Um, so I'm going to talk about it more then and I've already talked about it quite a lot, but yeah, I needed to have this physical copy. So I'm very happy to have this. And then I also got Know My Name by Chanel Miller, which once again, I've talked about quite a lot, I feel, but I needed the physical copy because it's so well written, so many amazing quotes. I needed to be able to easily flick back to my favorite quotes. So yeah, also she's gorgeous. So Okay, so now let's just get into fiction. So we have On Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong, who I mentioned previously. And I've actually already read this. I talked about this in my February TBR. I'm planning to reread it this month. So the first time I listened to this story on audiobook and now I'm going to be rereading it physically. And I just know I'm going to appreciate it a million times more than the first time. I definitely appreciated it the first time I read it, but not enough. So I'm very excited to reread it. This is basically a letter from a son to his mother who actually cannot read. And basically this explores their complicated relationship. It explores race, sexuality, so many things, and it's so well written. So yeah, like I said a million times, can't wait to reread it. And also this cover is stunning. Then when I went book shopping kind of recently, I saw Winter in Sokcho and I was like, that cover is stunning. And then I read the back and it sounded amazing. And it's basically by a debut French Korean author. And it's basically set in the town of Sokcho, which is actually on the border of South Korea and North Korea. Korea. And it follows this young French Korean woman who works at this guest house and one day this guest comes in and it's a French cartoonist and they quickly develop a relationship. They go on a quest to visit different locations in South Korea and then they eventually cross into North Korea. So very excited. Then I got Shoko's Smile by Choin Yong and this is another Korean book. It's actually a collection of seven short stories and it basically examines the nuanced relationships between women. Then I got Girls Against God by Jenny Haval. How cool is this cover? I'm obsessed with it. And this is a quiet horror novel that explores themes of alienation, queerness. Ooh, that's cool. So this is set in a small town in Norway where, you know, it's the classic white picket fences. There's strict white Christian values running through the town. And basically this is supposed to be a radical fusion of feminist thought and experimental horror. I'm intrigued. And then another Jenny Haval book I bought was Paradise Rot, which I heard about through Dakota Warren, who is an amazing 
person who makes youtube videos and i believe this is one of her favorite books and this is another quiet horror novel and it's basically about sexual awakening and queer desire so i'm very excited to get into this then i got a few classics so i got beauty and sadness by yasunari kawabata and i bought this when i was in galway in ireland so this is actually a secondhand copy so it's pretty cool and it was only three euros so i was like Find a memory and also hopefully I'll love it. It's supposed to be an erotic study of love and jealousy. Although when I posted my video talking about this, someone said that they absolutely hated this book and then I looked up reviews and it's definitely a mixed, like a lot of people have mixed opinions. <laughs> so I'm excited to see what I think, but thankfully it's not too long. So if I hate it, I won't have to suffer for too long. <laughs> oh my God, this is a very old book smell. Thoughts on the old book smell? I kind of like it. No, yeah, I like it. Anyway, <laughs> then I got Vanity Fair. I, to be honest, mainly got it for the cover because it's very stunning. Um, and I really wasn't that expensive in the bookstore when I got it in Ireland. So I was like, okay. And this is supposed to examine the position of women in an intensely exploitative male world, which got me excited, but it's written by a man. So that's when I was like, hmm, do I want to read this? <laughs> we will see, but very gorgeous cover. Another classic. Normal People by the one and only Sally Rooney. Obviously, I love this book and Caitlin got me this for my birthday. This edition is the favorite members edition and it's gorgeous, like, look at that. And on the back, the amazing quote, I'm not a religious person, but I do sometimes think God made you for me. Round of applause for that. So, so thankful to have this. Then Caitlin also got me another Favour Members edition of a book, and that is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. And I haven't read this, Caitlin loves it, she's been telling me to read it for a while now, so I'm very excited to get to it. And how good is this quote in the back? You say you're sure, sure that you're in love, how can you know it? You think love is so simple? Wow. And once again, Caitlin got me another stunning book, and that is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, and this is the 10th anniversary edition, which is absolutely gorgeous, like the boiling the amazing quote we were like gods at the dawning of the world and our joy was so bright we could see nothing else but the other wow our joy was so bright we could see nothing else but the other a nice reminder to not settle until you find someone who makes you feel like that very happy to have this if you didn't know i love this book i read it last year and fell in love so caitlin was like no offense you need this <laughs> so i was like thank you very much and this will definitely be having its moment on my bookshelf and yes just love it a lot love caitlin a lot very grateful then i got urbani by mona awad and i have already talked about this a million times so i absolutely love this book and this is a different edition i read from the black hardcover and i decided you know since i love this book so much it's basically my favorite book i decided i wanted to collect multiple editions so i got the orange paperback i also got the pink paperback which looks like this i don't have it with me because my sister penny is currently reading it which is very exciting <laughs> but yeah she has it right now but yes so i'm very excited to have my bunny shelf once i redo my bookshelves i'm very excited for that as you can probably tell but yes so i got bunny and then i also got another book by mona award 13 ways of looking at a fat girl this is her debut novel which i haven't read and obviously deals with the body which i always am intrigued to read about and then another mona award book that i have is all's well which well firstly yeah beautiful cover this is the uk arc Secondly, I'm ashamed, I haven't read it yet. Like, I think I got it in December and then I went to Ireland, I didn't bring it with me and then I came back and I've just been, you know, selling back into things. But I really hope I'll get to this this month because of course I'm so excited to read it. Like, Mona Award is just a genius. This is her novel After Bunny and actually this is somewhat connected to Bunny because this is the second book in the trilogy that is supposed to be like retellings of sorts. So this is like a Shakespeare retelling and it basically focuses on how people don't believe women's pain and thinking like, yeah, I wanna read that. Very, very, very excited. Then I got The Woman Destroyed by Simone de Beauvoir. Very excited because I haven't read any Simone de Beauvoir books before. And this copy, well, this cover, wow, literally obsessed. And this basically has three different stories about the decay of passion. And then I also got The Inseparables, which Caitlin told me to get. I was at the bookstore and I was like, oh, didn't you get this recently? She's like, yeah, no offense, get it. I was like, okay, let's body read. Oh, life without her would be death. Oh my gosh, exactly the compulsive story of two friends growing up and falling apart. Oh, exactly stories about friendship. I cannot wait. Then I got Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca. And this is a really short horror novel. And this is basically a really short horror novel and it sounds incredible. It involves ballet. It's about two lonely young women in an internet chat room in the early 2000s. And I believe like they fall in love, but obviously there's some sort of horror element. It says, what have you done today to deserve your eyes? Isn't that like haunting? Wow. 
Then I got A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers, which I talked about recently because I mentioned it in my top 22 books to read in 2022. But very excited to read it. Definitely sounds very unique. It's a satire of early foodism, a critique of how gender is defined, and a showcase of virtuoso storytelling. This book basically follows the food world's most charming psychopath. I really have a good feeling about this book. Like, I really think I'm gonna love it. Then I got Slow Days, Fast Company, The World, The Flesh in LA by Eve Babbitts. And this is a collection of essays. <laughs> the first line. This is a love story and I apologize. Then I got Writers and Lovers by Lily King. And this is the unforgettable portrait of an artist as a young woman. So basically it follows a woman who is blindsided by her mother's sudden death. And she's also dealing with a recent love affair. It's also set in 1997, which I love because I was born in 1996. So that era is just, you know, fun to me. Then I got Deborah Levy's Things I Don't Want to Know, which is nonfiction. And I bought this after reading and loving The Cost of Living by Deborah Levy. Then I got Boy Parts by by Eliza Clark, and this is supposed to be a comedy and it explores sexuality and gender roles in the 21st century. I always want to read stories exploring those things and also I do appreciate this cover, it's very stunning. Then I got My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante and I got this because Caitlin was like, no offense, can you get it? And we can better read it and I was like, okay. <laughs> um, also Caitlin read a book by Elena Ferrante recently and she really loved it. And lastly, I finally got some Agatha Christie novels. So obviously Agatha Christie is iconic and is known for writing her mystery novels. And when I went to Adelaide recently, I went to a bookstore, a used bookstore and saw these copies of her books. And I was like, I am obsessed with these vintage mystery novel vibes. So I got four. So I got The Body in the Library, A Pocket Full of Rye, At Bertram's Hotel, and Crooked House. I literally can't get over how cool these covers are. And they sound really fun too. They're obviously really short. So whenever I'm feeling like a short, fun mystery vibe, I can just pick one of these up. Um, and I'm just really intrigued to see if I'm going to vibe Agatha Christie's stories. Me! A sick joke brought the sharp tongue to Miss Marvel to the Fortescue home. We found her! Found who? Gladys, sir, the maid. Strangled she was with a stocking round her throat. Been dead for hours, I'd say. And sir, it's a wicked kind of joke. There was a clothes peg clipped on her nose. <laughs> okay, so those are all the books for this book haul. I really hope you enjoyed. I'm very excited about these books. I truly have a good feeling about like all of them. Thanks so much once again to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Don't forget you can go to bookofthemonth.com and use my code with Chloe to get your first book for just $9.99. If you've read any of these books, please let me know which ones I need to get to ASAP. It's honestly really hard to decide my next read recently because I just have so many books that I'm so excited about. But yeah, if you've read any of these and you're like, Chloe, you're literally going to be obsessed with this book like please let me know but if you're looking for more content from me i have a patreon which is always linked below and that is where i upload extra content like extra reading vlogs we do a monthly live show we do a monthly buddy read etc i have all my socials linked below including my twitch which is twitch.tv slash game with chloe and that is where i stream games and just chatting so yeah hope you're all having a good day or night and i'll see you in my next video